Let's take mass las guns to the absolute maximum and talk about how one of the strongest possible guard builds appears to be an ultra horde of over 300 conscripts. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking guard once more, and I've finally got round to doing a follow-up video to that Hammer of the Emperor video I did a little while back, focusing on conscripts in particular. I mentioned it briefly in that review of lists that were placing well at tournaments, but despite Hammer of the Emperor making the guard shooting significantly more powerful than it was, it looks like the only guard list that actually managed to place highly over the last three weeks was a guy over in the USA using 300 conscripts, and then yet more infantry support on top of that. It was pretty interesting that he detailed his army's strategy in a Reddit post that I'll link down below, and I also noticed a certain Mr. Mordian Glory here on YouTube has been having some decent success with his conscripts too, and I'll link that video down below as well. In any case, in this video I wanted to talk about conscripts in a guard army, why Hammer of the Emperor has really pushed them to the next level, and they've now become one of the strongest units in the army, a few damage and defensive combos, and then a look at that high placing guard list. So first up a look at the datasheet, conscripts are a troops choice for the Astra Militarum, 5 points per model troops that you can take in squads of between 20 and 30, and at 5 points per model they're joined with a few others at the cheapest troops in the game. The datasheet's really simple, they're just armed with a las gun and frag grenades, they have a pretty pathetic weapon skill and ballistic skill hitting on just 5s, a paltry leadership of 4, but the flak armour does give them a pretty decent 5 plus save, which is actually pretty decent durability for a 5 point per model troops choice. Perhaps their biggest disadvantage, though, is that they have this raw recruits rule, which means that if you issue them an order, say you want to move them very fast or double up their shooting, there's a 50% chance that they're going to fail that order. If you're not playing with the Cadian White Shields that can mitigate this, as we'll talk about in a second, it just makes it really hard to plan around commanding these, as they might fail an important move, move, move order at the wrong time, or fail first rank, second rank fire if you need to deal some mass damage. On the plus side though, the conscripts were perhaps the single biggest winner out of Hammer of the Emperor, the change where 6 is to hit auto wound, as it actually means they don't actually have a significantly lower damage output than standard infantry squads now, as the vast majority of damage that the actual last guns are going to be doing is going to come from those auto wounds on 6s, never mind what they actually have to roll as a wound roll. It is kind of interesting that even with Games Workshop giving these standard infantry squads a whole bunch of free gear, it seems that the massive great big blobs of conscripts are still finding themselves more popular in really quite a lot of lists, mainly due to the advantages that big units have for putting big buffs on them and being particularly good at holding down objectives. If you were taking tons and tons of conscripts in a list, then generally Cadian White Shields is going to be the best way to field them. You can get some pretty nice things from the other regiments, such as always cover from that Wilderness Survivors one, or have them all punching up at strength 4 when you're Katachan, but I think that these really pale into comparison with actually having your orders go off reliably, as the Cadian White Shields can. The White Shields upgrade is bought for command points for each detachment, it's basically one command point per every unit of two conscripts. It grants them leadership 6, which I guess is okay, but far more importantly, it means that your orders aren't going to be failing you 50% of the time. I'd say the two most important orders for the conscripts are Move 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 and 1st Rank Fire 2nd Rank Fire, Move 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 just gives the standard guardsman ridiculously unlikely mobility. Basically some guy shouts at you and then you get to move in advance all over again in your shooting phase. So from a standing start, your conscripts are going to be averaging around about 19 inch movement between a double move and two different advance rolls. It means that even starting within your own deployment zone, you could be move blocking entire chunks of the enemy army and stop them from getting into the midfield whatsoever. But perhaps more importantly, just grabbing and holding down midfield objectives you could easily be jumping from completely behind cover to right into the middle of the board with this, potentially swiping an objective from under your opponent's nose, and if you have the movement you might be able to physically screen the entire objective from the opponent even moving onto it. When you've got 30 bodies you could physically block enemy units from moving onto it, potentially even forcing them to charge you if they did want to even touch the marker. Otherwise for damage dealing, first rank fire, second rank fire just flatly doubles your damage output so it's usually going to be the go-to. Depending on what situations the units are in though, advancing and shooting could still be handy, fixed bayonets to fight to get in combat if you can't fall back, or potentially falling back and shooting. Now 30 models for 150 points with an ok save can be an annoying target to remove, but provided the enemy's got some sort of high volume fire, they will be getting through them eventually. Guard do have a surprising amount of ways though to make conscripts really really tough if they want to, 
and a unit that you ping out to take an objective can actually be a massive pain to remove if you've got the right buffs up. Firstly, just light cover can be really handy. With a massive unit footprint, it's often going to be possible to at least get some of them into cover for a 4 plus save, and then you can take those saves on the models in cover first, and at least give you a little bit more durability for the units. Then there's a couple of different plus one save stratagems. Go to ground can just give you an extra plus one to your saves at range, either a 4 plus armor save out in the open, or a 3 plus if you happen to be in cover. And then the pretty awesomely named Cadia Stands gives you a plus one to your saves versus damage one weapons, which are usually going to be the maximum efficient thing against conscripts. And also, if they happen to be targeted by something fairly high strength, then wound rolls of two always fail, as well as wound rolls of one. It's quite nice that that one works in melee as well, so if you're being attacked by a whole load of low AP attacks, then that could still be worth it there. At range though, combine this with go to ground, and if you're being shot by damage one weapons, then you've got a 2 plus save if you're in light cover. Pretty ridiculous for 5 point models and a couple of CP. Then, if you want to, you've got the option of taking along some support psychers. You might be a little bit reliant on actually getting the psychic powers off, but an astropath with psychic barry can stack yet another plus 1 to the save on top of the stratagems. Potentially that's a 2 plus save against damage worn weapons in the open if you're willing to spend the CP. Night Shroud could also give you a minus 1 to hit at range as well. Also good, but given all the other stacking save things that you can get, I'd generally say that Psychic Barrier is a bit more vital. And potentially, if you were feeling very fancy, you could buy in an Inquisitor to lead them. One of those has an option to give a unit a 5 plus invul save via a Psychic Power, and then that currently does still combine with the Psychic Barrier spell. So if you do manage to get both casts off, then you can get a Conscript Squad a 4 plus invul save if you should desire. At least on paper, it does seem like a pretty reasonable combo for a unit that you're going to be throwing down onto an objective with move, move, move. Otherwise, leadership certainly is going to cause issues. I think a lot of the time you are just going to have to take morale tests and accept that morale attrition is going to erode away a fair few conscripts. If you need to fill HQ slots, I suppose you could go with a Lord Commissar or use that Inquisitor just so you're not losing as many models from small failed saves. I guess theoretically you could use Draconian Discipline as a Warlord trait with a Commissar. And there's the two command points to auto pass once per game if it is absolutely vital. Looking at damage, first rank fire, second rank fire, and a unit of conscripts can stack a whole load of saves on the enemy now. One officer can potentially even issue it to multiple different squads per turn. And if you do manage to use a full squad, and depending on how many are in rapid fire range, you're usually going to be getting between 60 and 120 shots. Even on tough targets, the Elas guns are going to be wounding on sixes. That should be somewhere around 12 to 24 AP0 wounds on just about any target in the game, guaranteeing you some pretty hefty damage on anything with a 3 plus save or worse. For example, if you were firing at a toughness 8 vehicle with a 3 plus armor save, you'd average around about 8 wounds if everyone was in rapid fire range. Even things like Terminators are still going to fill the pinch. You'd average just over one dead Terminator with each round of shooting. If you want to amp up close range damage even more, then for one command point you could use shock troops. That's the Cadian specific stratagem that makes your shooting that's within half range better by an extra AP minus one, and it also counts you as stationary as well. So unless you've just come out of strategic reserve or something, you'll also get the Cadian reroll ones to hit. Just getting AP minus one on those las guns is going to be an absolutely enormous damage buff against anything that doesn't have armor of contempt. Say for example, if you pop this stratagem coming out of strategic reserve and you take aim at say something like a unit of Necron Scorpec destroyers and you average around about 13 wounds to those guys, potentially killing the vast majority of a fairly elite squad. If you do want the last guns to act like a bit of a meme and just vaporise tanks and vehicles, then this seems to be the way. I'd also bear in mind Overwatch as a more powerful option as well. If you do have a fairly intact conscript blob that's being charged, you could have up to 60 shots on the enemy, with the 6s auto-wounding. Stacking 10 AP0 saves couldn't be absolutely devastating on something like Gene Stealer Colts, where they have very hard-hitting but fairly fragile infantry charging in. Finally, if you're playing Chaos, then for one command point, Vengeance for Cadia could allow you to reroll all hits and wounds for a unit. Stack that with 1st rank fire, 2nd rank fire, and you're going to be having an obscene amount of auto-wounds. Usually just with Vengeance for Cadia and 1st rank fire, 2nd rank fire, that's usually going to be averaging over 30 wounds on your target, never mind what any of the actual hits happen to do, as they're re-rolling wound rolls as well. That's easily getting to the capacity where you're actually going to be doing some serious damage, even for the points. I guess in theory you could also include the Relic of Lost Cadia, which could give you an aura of the same effect once per game. 
I feel like that would only really be worth including, though, if Chaos were going to be really common in the meta, and you expected to be facing them an awful lot. In game, I'd be most tempted to be starting some of them on the table, but fair few of them in strategic reserve in one way or another. It actually could allow you to get some very decent damage off against enemy units on the flanks, and potentially could be a way to protect units that have to the last on them, and not even allow your opponent to attack them until later in the game. Cadians can use the Gifted Commander Warlord traits to redeploy three of them or put them into Strategic Reserve, and the Dagger of Tussar could allow you to outflank one unit and a commander, or it could just pay the regular command points to use Strategic Reserves normally. In game, with just this crazy amount of bodies, hopefully a fair few armies would struggle to grind through all of them in a game, particularly if you're a little bit judicious in hiding them out of line of sight where possible. And in general, the aim would be to send multiple waves of infantry to repeatedly flip primary objectives and hold them for yourself, and just sacrifice enough guardsmen to keep the objectives going, while hopefully dealing a bit of chip damage to anything that presents itself. If you really do spam conscripts, you're pretty much guaranteed to give up no prisoners, and assassinate could potentially be another weak point for secondaries, depending on just how many support characters you've chosen to bring along. With a list that near guarantees you having a whole load of obsec models on midfield objectives though, there are quite a lot of solid options that you can take for secondaries yourself. Engage on all fronts isn't that hard with scions and move, move, move. Stranglehold could be okay for repeatedly flipping the midfield. Retrieve Nackman's data or raise the banners could both be nice. Mental interrogation could be an option if you're bringing psychers along. And to the last could be good on three big safe units of conscripts or potentially on a manticore hiding out of line of sight. To finish up, here's that massed conscript list from the Dallas Open one of the most successful guard lists over the last month or so. Taking 14th in a really big 150 plus man tournament really is quite impressive. The list was played by a gentleman called Dirk Herekovic. I'm very sorry if I'm mangling that pronunciation too badly. He's the guy who made the extensive Reddit post that explained his workings behind the list down in the video description. The list organised into two Cadian battalions and an Iotan Gorgon Scion patrol, and it's fairly simple as Warhammer 40k lists go. Castell and Creed and three company commanders are there to fill the HQ slots and provide the orders to the conscripts. Castell and Creed isn't the warlord, but he is pretty handy for having a big 12-inch order range, which is quite nice when there's this many bodies on the board. For the company commanders, one takes Gifted Commander and one takes the Cure of Zaquilla, so that's the strategic reserve one and a bit of command point farming. Then for the crazy amount of infantry, there's 10 units of 30 conscripts, According to his post, he's found about 300 models to be the sweet spot, which I think is kind of funny. Enough bodies to keep all the chaff coming onto objectives turn on turn for the entire game, while still having a little bit of support from the scions and backfield. Usually at least four of those units start in strategic reserve to come on and deal some mass las fire damage when they turn up. There's then two tiny units of command squads with las guns. I guess they could be really quite handy just for expendable tiny units to scream with, or maybe do some simple actions like raise banners without committing conscripts to it. Two mortar heavy weapon teams to provide a bit of line of sight ignoring firepower, and they really are quite efficient against a lot of targets with the Cadian Unique Order allowing them to reroll all hits, and then the Ioten Gorgon Scion Patrol, a Tempesta Prime, two units of five scions, one unit of six, and they're the ones that have a stratagem to drop very very close to the enemy so they can turn up just outside five inches, guaranteeing that you're going to be able to do Retrieve Nackman data almost 100%. I believe it adds up to 335 bodies worth of guard goodness, and it's pretty fun to see such a ridiculous skew list doing well. In his post he mentions that his normal secondary objectives are engaged on all fronts, which I guess makes sense with this amount of move 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 on the board. Retrieve Nackman data, which is near guaranteed with the Scions, and to the last targeting three of the safest units of conscripts, hopefully hiding off the board or out of line of sight for a fair portion of the game. I've played some pretty hefty model count armies myself in the past, and I can't help but think it'd still be a bit of a slog to admin, even if you did have maximal movement trays, knew your army perfectly, and were quite decisive about decision making. It must be pretty intimidating for quite a lot of enemy armies though, seeing that many models on the table, and just thinking about how you're actually going to be able to deal with so many. In any case, really cool to see the guard doing well, and big congrats on the high placement with one of 40k's more difficult factions to win with. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on the power of conscripts down in the comments. As always, look forward to hearing all your thoughts and ideas. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k things coming, with new videos out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, 
I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find it down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.